Since the 1970s, Sunderland AFC have had 10 manufacturer's logos feature on their kits. Let's take a brief overview of them all. The first was Umbro, who produced the kits throughout the 70s and notably featured on the kits in the 1973 FA Cup final. Lecoq Sportif took the reins in 81 and there's probably a whole separate video to make there just on the single home kit they produced alone. Nike entered the European Football Shirt Arena in 1983 and Sunderland were their first project. So inexperienced were they, the club badge and the Nike logo were the wrong way around. An endearing mistake and quite iconic shirts as a result. 86 saw Patrick take over and they made some really nice kits. Hummel took over in 1988 and remained until 94, overseeing a period which did include an FA Cup final and promotion via a playoff final defeat, but not much else. Avec came in right at the end of Sunderland's time at Roker Park and made the farewell shirts of the 1996-97 season. 1997 not only saw a change of stadium, the club's entire identity was overhauled. New badge, the familiar logo of Vaux was jettisoned in favour of Lamptons, a sub-brand of the brewery, and another new addition was ASICS, a Japanese firm who produced some of my personal favourites, including the Lost shirts that I covered in another video. After ASICS, it was Nike who returned for a second run. After a classic home shirt, they made what I still think is one of the worst shirts we've ever had, although they produced some absolutely fantastic away shirts. In 2004, Diodora signed on for a long-term deal, but the contract was ripped up after just one season. A shame, as the two kits that they did make were absolutely outstanding. Diodora doing a runner meant a quick solution was required. Lonsdale, a company known for producing sportswear for many sports, but absolutely not football, stepped in, making a single home shirt and two away shirts. All solid efforts. Umbro came back in time for Sunderland's return to the Premier League under Roy Keane. Their five years saw a plethora of solid shirts. Adidas would become the club's supplier in 2012 and remained for a colossal eight years. Adidas oversaw the most varied collection of kits, ranging from some brilliant to some atrocities. The away shirts occasionally moved out of the traditional colour schemes with the first green and even pink and purple kits which you either love or you're wrong. Finally, in 2020, our old friend Nike returned for a third run, and so far, it's been brilliant, with the 21-22 home shirt destined to become a classic. So there you have it, 10 companies across half a century. But who is the greatest? Well, you would think it would be Umbro, the OG, the one that started it all. But what about Adidas? They made the most shirts and are probably the most recognisable globally thanks to Sunder Until I Die. What about Nike? Three separate stints spanning back four decades, as well as the two recent Wembley wins. It's got to be them, hasn't it? Well, no. You see, there's one brand that seems to have risen above the rest as the most beloved. And it's Hummel. No other Sunderland shirts have stood the test of time quite like the Hummel shirts of 1988 to 1994. You still see originals being worn on match days quite often by people who are younger than the shirts themselves. The Sunderland Score Draw replica lineup is dominated by Hummel remakes. The Score Draw remake of this 1991 away shirt must be one of the best-selling Sunderland shirts ever produced. It's everywhere. Next time you're at the Stadium of Light, count how many you see. And it makes perfect sense because you can buy a brand new one right now for £30. Or you can get an old one on eBay for anything between 150 to 300 pounds. It is a nice shirt. I do like the design of it. Although it always baffled me that it's got Newcastle scarfs lying in the sleeves. It's quite incredible how valuable these shirts have become. The blue away shirt of 88, as well as the two variants of the yellow that followed, will set you back 300 pounds. And if you have the 1993 third kit that looks like a Watford shirt, because it was a Watford shirt, then you are sat on a gold mine and you can expect at least £500 if you wish to sell. I'd like to wrap this video up by just having a little review of this shirt here. This is the original 1988 Sunderland Hummel home shirt and it's absolutely perfect. There is not a single thing I would change about this shirt. Lecoq Sportif, Nike and Patrick all went a bit different with the kits. 
This was the first true return to the traditional stripes all around the kit since Umbro. There's no gimmicks here apart from the chevrons on the sleeve. And even they look great. You've got these little black bits of trim. They match perfectly with the Hummel badge, which is smart. And Vox, the greatest sponsor Sunderland have ever had. I don't think that's up for debate. If you disagree, by all means comment, but I, I don't think any of you will. I don't think there's any denying. That's the most iconic and greatest sponsor Sunderland ever have had. And I can't see anyone ever beating it. And of course you have the old blue ship badge. There's been two variations of it. There was the blue one and then the black one later on. I think most people probably prefer the blue. Could be wrong, but it's the original. I think it's the one that people pine for the most. I personally prefer the blue one as well. So why Hummel? Why have they remained so popular after all these decades? I think they're a happy medium between the more traditional shirts of the 60s and 70s that the old boys love and the more modern shirts of today. They just seem to appeal to the most generations. And it, you know, like I said before, you see teenagers now wearing these. They weren't even born when these shirts were produced. They gave the fans what they wanted. Traditional home shirts. They gave us away shirts in familiar colours. Everything they did was absolutely spot on what Sunderland fans wanted and what Sunderland needed. Now, the late 80s and early 90s might not have been the most successful period in Sunderland's history. But at least they look good.